very much uh, for staying the course. And uh, what I'm really talking about tonight is a kind of container in which so many of these conversations might or might not happen. So I want to talk about clothing optional theatre and ask for your thoughts, engagement, challenges afterwards. But first I'd like to share three aspects of my life, theatre, naturism and sexuality. Uh, I work in the theatre business, behind the scenes, at a desk or in a teaching and coaching environment. I've never been a performer myself, except for a bit of ballet and contemporary dance at school. I train theatre producers and help to make international connections between theatre makers. I took to naturism about 20 years ago when I was on holiday in Australia and uh, found the freedom of swimming naked. I got hooked, I came back and joined British naturism, found naked sites and beaches, naked swims, and just enjoyed for the first time uh, being natural with my body. I kept taking steps which felt scary but worth it. Each time I was helping myself come to terms with my small cock, my lack of an Adonis body line and a general shyness. I guess nude modelling was one of those steps. The teacher reassured me that the imperfections made much better subject matter for drawing and painters. <laughs> and throughout the time I was re-examining my own sexuality. I played with fellow boys at my school, danced with them and found it exciting. At university, I came to be in a poly relationship with one of three wings of a rather wonderful exploratory girl, along with another man and a trans man. But then I settled down to being in a heteronormal life, first wife, children now grown up and amazing, a house, full-time job, etc., etc. Wind forward many years, and I'm embracing my bisexuality and becoming again involved with the poly and trans worlds. I'm blessed with the wife I've been with for the last 20 years who welcomes my explorations. At university, I studied maths for a bit, and uh, I really like a Venn diagram. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is a Venn diagram with the intersections of my three worlds, I suppose sexuality, naturism, and theatre. Um, as I head into my 60s, I've begun to cease to be so private in my thoughts, uh, become an active champion in the LGBT community, of which I feel like a late arrival. I've also realised that I want to explore something myself as a creative practitioner. And this is what I want to share tonight. Three years ago, I was at an annual uh, closed <coughs> new work theatre conference called Devote and Disgruntled. Some of you I know have been to it as well. And I decided to call a session on something I entitled Clothing Optional Theatre. I'd been working with my wife on a theatre research project about Aphrodite, which had brought together nude modelling, some theatre and some members of the naturist community. I'd got hooked on getting my kit off and then exploring theatre and art at the same time. <laughs> at our clothed conference, a group of artists joined me and the conversation got deep and powerful very quickly. I realised there was a thirst for understanding the potential of collaborative, clothing-optional conversations. As an aside, much as I love my fellow naturists, if I go to a British event and find myself comfortably in a steam room with some couples and singles, it's usually silent. If there is conversation, it tends to drift between holiday destinations, caravan specifications, <laughs> and great places to park. <laughs> God forbid if anyone talks about sex or sensuality, or what made them become a naturist, or the change in body shape, or personal scars. There's a very British shield around all this, and that interested my fellow artists when we were talking. So I decided to hold a clothing optional conference, and by the way, I'd love to do another one in Glasgow. These were in London. <laughs> Um, I chose an area of discussion. How do we choose to reveal our bodies through life, performance and art? And the we was important in that case. It wasn't about how other people do it, but how do the people in the room? I brought together people I knew and felt safe with who worked in the theatre live art world, such as dancers and painters. Those who worked with the naked form or sacred sexual areas, tantra specialists, masseurs, workshop leaders, and sprinkled this gathering with some naturists who wanted to explore themselves more. I found a safe place, I explored how to facilitate a powerful series of conversations using my tool of choice, open space technology, which some of you will use in conflict resolution around the world, and invited 40 or 50 people, of whom 20 were available, in London that day. It was an inspiring a day. I used open space technology, which was created by Harrison Owen, not for naturist communities, 
And two of its principles are whoever comes are the right people, and we were delighted that those people turned up, and then whatever happens <coughs> is the only thing that could happen. Uh, there are other principles, but we also found that we invented a new principle as we were playing, and that is, whatever someone is wearing is the right thing, or nothing. And this has actually been passed back to Harrison Owen, who loves it, and is adding it to some of his mix of principles around the world. So conversations around cat flowed around healing scars, the aging body, pornography, dancing the body, the shields we build, loving someone as they morph and change through age or gender realignment, the law of nudity, nudity and madness, and of course the kinds of theatre which might develop from this. Those present chose their level of clothing, shedding layers as they warmed up, and interestingly donning some light clothing when exploring certain subjects. The wonderful Michael Dresser, who you've heard from earlier, led an exploration in the evening exploring three circles of nakedness, witnessing, awakening, and showing. Uh, we can both share more about this, but I suppose an example outside this whole world would be, I'm showing, you're awakened to it because you've decided I'm a stand-up comedian and you don't mind if I'm going to get you involved and get you to comment backwards and forwards, and you've chosen to be at the back, side, back area so that no one's going to pick on you. <laughs> and within a workshop environment, creating those three spaces helps to create a safer space especially for those people who might not want to be too involved. Uh, so we created that space. Michael showed us how to do it. We've used it in many ways thereafter. But back to the Venn diagram. I won't put it up again. You don't need it for the moment. I want to look at three intersections. Theatre and nudity, theatre and sexuality, and naturism and sexuality. So theatre and nudity happen. That intersection happens, but what if you go to the next step and explore the, explore the clothing optional safe way of working with an audience and performer as one? In October 2017, I was invited to test this idea out in the West End, uh, bringing a completely clothing optional audience uh, to the musical Hair. For those who don't know the show, it's a 1960s musical which shocked the theatre-going public because the whole cast get naked for a moment at the end of Act One in a joyous celebration of freedom. The show opened in this production with the whole cast clothed in a seated circle as the audience walks past them to take their seats. So picture yourself as a member of the cast, seated, as the audience all walk in. That's fine, except in this case, all the audience is naked and you're clear. <laughs> The amount of genitalia at eye level was quite staggering. <laughs> <laughs> However, they delivered their show, and the night was a storm. The cast uh, sang their hearts out. The old and the young naked hippies in the audience cheered and joined in, and after the performance, there was dancing and joy in the bar. Uh, we tried to create a safe space. We made sure there was consent from all the audience that they were going to be in a space where nakedness would exist, and every member of the public was totally empowered to wear or not wear whatever they wanted. And there was a very big cloakroom. <laughs> and at the end, there were no photographs except one or two posed ones uh, that British naturists wanted. I've done one more naked show at the vaults and look forward to doing more. There's a thirst for this kind of event. Theatre and sexuality is another intersection. It happens, but usually in a powerfully written play, a clothed play that we watch from the safety of our seat, and hope they may tell a little of our story. As I developed my ideas for clothing optional theatre, I was heartened to be told by an international mentor that this was more of a movement than a show. I'm beginning to talk about it as revelation and using clothing optional theatre as a shorthand explainer. For this work, I'm not interested in the witnessing of other people's stories across the divide of the footlights. I'm interested in how my story and your story and the extraordinary stories we've witnessed tonight from the lectures could be brought to stage and created in a safe but edgy way. The third intersection, naturism and sexuality, happen, but this is possibly the most challenging area. Am I a real naturist if I enjoy exploring the wrong end of the naturist beach? Or I visit to a sauna where touch is allowed? Uh, if I have consensual encounters and erotic adventures and experiences between fellow naked folk, am I accepted as a true naturist? By some, definitely not. Our fellow naturists at the conference I held were happy getting their kit off, but then we began to work with the body, with ideas about healing and change. 
and it became more challenging. As the conversations turned, like tonight, to sexual activity, some people put their clothes on. But as the clothing optional days in London went on, we found immense power in hearing the bottled up stories of some very English folk about their first encounters with the naked body, with their own body, other bodies, and the loves and lives they had. It was so powerful to allow some of those stories to be brought to the stage, to life, by actors and the creatives present. This is the power of a, of a ritual in this space. It can be cathartic, joyful, validating and healing. It's this intersection of the heart, at the heart of the three circles that I want to explore more. And maybe with your help. So what happens now? Um, I've got a Venn diagram. Uh, I have some amazing people, uh, mainly in England, who want to help and be part of the next stages of exploration. Uh, I have uh, some rich topics of exploration, a little bit like your anonymous uh, questions at the beginning. Uh, I have a pile of anonymous topics, which are fascinating to explore in a workshop. I haven't yet made a project. I've had a quiet year away from it as I settled into my new life here in Scotland. The invitation to talk with you tonight is one of the sparks which reawakened me to find partners here to develop the project. I moved to Edinburgh 18 months ago and I'm joyously regrouping and finding new networks. I haven't held any clothing and optional events yet. <laughs> I've been to my first naturist Arlington Bath swim, highly recommended. It feels a safe and very boundaried space, no touch, no look. Uh, my wife and I have both joined up and it's wonderfully relaxing to be in those Turkish baths naked. I've been to, the two, to two annual Bitastic conferences and brought some thoughts on clothing optional to the discussion at this year's conference. My wife and I went to a clothing optional viewing of an art exhibition last month. And she continues to make work in the theatre of her own. And in February, quick plug if I may, uh, she's offering her naked performance at the Audacious Women's Festival in Edinburgh called Invisible Lines. I have, I have leaflets if anybody. <laughs> uh, in thinking about the future, I've talked to some of the funders of live art and events and the idea hasn't scared them, so that's good. Um, I know I have something to explore. So, can we make clothing optional stuff happen together? Can we help to forge a movement? Can we cause revelation? Uh, your invitation to me tonight seemed like the perfect time to come out to a group of fascinating strangers. I want to know why you're here. Is it to study, erotic pleasure, work, learning? And might we have had this whole last 12 minutes clothing optional had we gained <laughs> consent before? <laughs> I'd love to talk with lots of you and, and see what, uh, where I might go from here. I love finding how to connect my love of naturism, my love of theatre, and my love of sexuality. And thanks to my wife. Uh, for being an inspiration and a creative challenger in the very best way. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you.